been a horrifying mystery these past few days. Three Americans dying at the same resort in the Dominican Republic within a five-day period. As the number of tourists who died under mysterious circumstances rises to seven. Then the drinker looks like this, only half conscious, hardly able to stagger, hard to breathe. And that's fortunate in a way, because if he was able to lift his hand for another drink, the undertaker would have another customer. So very rarely on this channel have I strayed into the realm of current events. A lot of the conspiracies and the disappearances that I cover are all pretty well established, but today's video is going to be a little different. Recently some strange things have been going down in the Dominican Republic. American tourists visiting the area have been dying at a somewhat alarming rate with little to no explanation. And for a while, this was a story that was captivating headlines here in the United States and causing a lot of paranoia and worry for people who are traveling to the area. But as the shock of this story has kind of wound down, people are starting to lose interest in the story and news outlets are not covering it as intensely anymore. But despite this, we never really got a satisfying conclusion to the issue at hand. We never figured out why people are dying in the Dominican Republic. Now obviously the question that we want to answer in this video is why people are dying. But in order to figure that out, we first have to look at how these people died. So this was a story that initially broke when three tourists died in the span of just five days. And that story led to more digging and more research, which led to the discovery that this is something that's been happening somewhat frequently the past year. All in all, there's been about 13 suspicious deaths in the span of just over one year. On June 15, 2018, Mark Hurlbut Sr. passed away at a Dominican resort due to heart and respiratory problems. The night before his death, Mark and his wife had been eating at a restaurant at their hotel. Mark reported feeling ill and was reportedly unable to stay awake, so the couple went to bed early, but Mark never woke up in the morning. According to his wife, she found him laying in bed dead, and adding to the creepiness of this, there was some type of green substance coming out of his mouth. Later that same month, 51-year-old Yvette Monique Sport passed away at the Bahia Principe Resort due to a heart attack. Shortly before her death, Sport had drank liquor from her room's minibar and went to bed. Much like Mark Hurlbut, she never woke up. On July 14, 2018, David Harrison passed away at the Hard Rock Hotel due to a pulmonary edema and respiratory failure. In the days leading to his death, Harrison had felt extremely sick. In the night he passed away, he had woke up with a full body of sweat and was unable to speak. According to his wife, the sweat had an extremely foul and peculiar odor. His wife also later reported that she was pressured by local officials to cremate the body quickly after the death. They claim that it would be cheaper and easier for everyone involved, but many have took this as a sign that they were trying to cover something up. So these three deaths happened in the span of about one month back in 2018, and obviously they're pretty suspicious and they're pretty sketchy, but they didn't really lead to much news coverage here. And in fact, the deaths in the Dominican Republic seemed to stop for a while, up until March of this year. And this recent string of deaths is really what caused this big hysteria. Just recently, the death of 31-year-old Tracy Jerome Jester Jr. was confirmed. On March 19, 2019, Jester had reportedly called his sister and claimed that he was throwing up blood and that he couldn't breathe. He had also claimed that he had drank Sprite that was purchased from his hotel and that it had tasted, quote, nasty. Just a few hours after this phone call, Jester passed away in his hotel room. Less than a month later, on April 14th, 67-year-old Robert Bell Wallace passed away unexpectedly while staying at the Hard Rock Hotel. In the days prior, Wallace had taken a drink from the minibar and immediately fell ill. This mysterious illness took Bell's life just three days after he had consumed the drink. There is yet to be an official explanation as to what exactly happened to Wallace, but his family is suspicious 
that some sort of foul play was involved. John Cochran passed away in his hotel due to a heart attack. Though this death was reportedly unexpected and seems to fit in with the other cases, Cochran's family believes that this was simply a death caused by natural causes, and he apparently had some pre-existing heart conditions. Now, I did have to mention this one because it does share some similarities to the other cases that we've talked about, but it does seem like this was a case of somebody who was unhealthy passing away because of that. So it doesn't 100% fit in, but I had to mention it anyway. While staying at the luxury Bahia Principe, 41-year-old Miranda Warner passed away unexpectedly due to a heart attack. She was not even there for a full day, but reportedly the heart attack came shortly after she had taken a drink from her room's minibar. At the Playa Nueva Romana Hotel, 63-year-old Edward Nathaniel Holmes and 49-year-old Cynthia Ann Day were found dead inside of their hotel room on May 30th. Their cause of death was reportedly respiratory failure that was brought on by a pulmonary edema. And the fact that they both died on the same night together due to the same thing is sketchy. I mean, that stuff doesn't happen naturally and it certainly doesn't happen on accident. And this was that one case that was so sketchy and so suspicious that it captured headlines all across the United States and really started this whole craze. And honestly, understandably so. I mean, how do you explain that? Less than two weeks later, on June 10th, 53-year-old Layla Cox died of a sudden heart attack in her hotel room. Not much further is available for this specific case, but the basic information alone and cause of death does seem to correlate with the other cases. 55-year-old Joseph Allen passed away on June 13th due to a suspected heart attack. Previously during his trip, he had complained about not feeling 100%, and reportedly he felt like he was overheating. Because of this, Allen turned in early for the night and passed away alone in his hotel room. One week later, Vittorio Caruso died while in a hospital in Santa Domingo. An autopsy had revealed that Caruso had died from respiratory and heart failure. That being said, much like the death of Cochran, this death may have been naturally occurring as Caruso did have a history of health problems. While celebrating her marriage in Punta Cana, Susan Simone returned to her home in Louisiana with no reported symptoms of illness. However, one week later, Susan suddenly was rushed to the hospital with fluids in her lungs. She didn't survive. The suddenness and strangeness of this death has left many convinced that some sort of foul play was involved, and specifically that her death was spurred on due to something that she consumed during her trip to the Dominican Republic. On June 25th, the final reported death took place when Khalid Atkins was removed from an airplane after he had started vomiting in the plane's bathroom. The next three days, Atkins was bedridden in a hospital, screaming in pain and vomiting uncontrollably. There is yet to be an official cause of death for Atkins, but there certainly are similarities with the other cases. So looking at all 13 of these deaths, I would say at the very least 11 of them are suspicious. And between these 11 cases, there are some key similarities. For starters, all 13 people died suddenly from either heart failure or respiratory failure. Many of those who died had randomly fallen ill in the days or hours leading to their deaths. Also, many had taken drinks from their mini bar or from other bars in their hotel. And finally, many of the victims showed some symptoms of poisoning. So with that being said, let's take a look at the possibilities as to what may have caused this recent string of deaths. Recently, after the initial story of these deaths broke here in the United States, a couple came forward with a story of their own. A man and his wife had reportedly fallen ill while staying at the Bahia Principe. The couple suffered from cramps, drooling, nausea, and watery eyes for weeks after their trip. And throughout their time there, the couple had smelled a strong chemical odor in their hotel room. 
And when they told the maid about it, she came in to check it out and immediately left because she smelled it too and she didn't trust it. Now while exploring the hotel, the couple had apparently seen a worker spraying pesticides dangerously close to the air conditioning unit. And shockingly, both of them had tested positive for organophosphates, which are man-made chemicals found in insecticides. And these are chemicals that are all but banned in the United States because they can poison people. But many of them are allowed to be used in the Dominican Republic. And the most severe symptom that can be caused by being exposed to these chemicals is actually death. So maybe it's possible that workers in the Dominican Republic have been unknowingly spraying these chemicals too close to air conditioning units and in turn ended up poisoning some of their guests. I mean, this is such an interesting theory, and in the case of the couple that I was just talking about, this is almost certainly what happened to them. But with that being said, I'm not sure it's the actual cause of death for any of the other cases that we've talked about. Because I think if this was really true, then many more people would have died or at least fallen ill by now. And not only that, but if you look at the victims, they're all older people. And poison like this would affect children the most. And the fact that no children have passed away and none of them have showed signs of this poisoning means that this probably isn't a widespread problem. And quite honestly, this may have just been a one-off event with this one couple. So what is one thing that all of these victims have in common? Well, they all ate at their respective hotels. I mean, that's the one undeniable link between all of these people. So for that reason, it at the very least has to be entertained. So could these guests have eaten tainted food? Well, quite honestly, at this point, this is simply just a hunch, but it does kind of make sense. Perhaps poor food handling led to these people getting sick and eventually dying, or maybe even worse, this food was intentionally poisoned. I mean, this would be one of the easiest answers to accept because it does link everything together. But that being said, there's no evidence for it and there's no proof. But this still remains an interesting theory, and I'm going to keep it in the back of my mind for when new evidence comes out. Now, the one thing that sparked my interest with this case was actually a video that I had seen on Twitter. Hey, this label, this is the third time I'm showing this. Tell me what the shit we drinking now. So that's some Ciroc, with coconut, and some other flavor. Ice and cranberry in here. Right? Look here, the more I turn it, the more it, it starts to solidify. You all think I'm lying, this ain't no joke. Look at that. You believe that? Where the hell this come from? These people trying to kill y'all. Look here. Look here. But I am not lying. Just to keep hopping up. But these people trying to kill y'all. But look at this. What What is this? Now this is clearly sketchy because... Alcohol is not supposed to do that. But despite the fact that this video could easily have been faked, it still has spurred on an interesting and popular theory. And the theory is that tainted liquor is being sold all across the Dominican Republic. And this tainted liquor is actually poisonous. And it's obvious why this theory is so popular. I mean, roughly half of the deaths were confirmed to have come after the victim had taken a drink from the minibar. And that's just what's been confirmed. I mean, most of these resorts are all-inclusive, and people are going there to drink and have a good time. And I mean, one could assume that all of these people had had at least one drink at their time at their hotel. Now, going into specifics, people claim that the liquor is being laced with chemicals such as antifreeze, battery acid, and methanol, and all of which would cause symptoms similar to what these victims had. Now, further adding to this theory was the fact that, again, no children had died under these circumstances. And this would all kind of make sense because, obviously, children wouldn't be drinking on their vacations because that's illegal. So the ages and the cause of deaths really do kind of correlate with this theory. And it seems that some hotels are actually starting to buy into this. Like, for example, the Hard Rock Hotel is no longer serving liquor in their mini bars, which is probably for the best. But in my mind, this all just adds validity to this theory. You know, there's something that still doesn't make much sense about this fake liquor theory. If there really was such an influx of poison-laced alcohol in the Dominican Republic, 
wouldn't more people be dying? I mean, it really is a tourist area and everybody's going there to drink. I mean, trust me, I've actually visited the area on multiple occasions and I've actually stayed at the Bahia Principe where three people died in five days. And the whole atmosphere around this resort was fueled by drinking and having fun the way it should be. So if there really were that many bottles of poisonous alcohol, people would be dropping like flies. But obviously this isn't the case. I mean, these deaths seem to be more paced and more meticulous, which may mean that they might actually be the work of a serial killer. I mean, perhaps this is the work of an individual who's been tampering with small sample sized bottles of liquor and putting them inside hotel mini bars to slowly kill people off. Because if they were poisoning the big bottles of liquor and the hotels were serving that to everybody, uh, nobody would make it home. So maybe they're poisoning the small bottles because it's easier to get away with and because this would sort of pace things out and make things less suspicious. I mean, though we don't really have a motive or any proof of this, it's still such an interesting theory to me. So I'm starting to think that this bootleg liquor is really isolated to these small little bottles. Because as I've said before, that's the easiest to get away with. So perhaps there really is a serial killer loose in the Dominican Republic. I'll be honest, to me it's kind of sad to see the way that the Dominican Republic has been dragged by the media. I mean, this is a place that I used to love to visit, and in all my time staying there, I never really felt in danger. And now I'm left to wonder how much of this story is actually just fear-mongering and hype. Because if you really take a look at the statistics, the number of American tourist deaths in the area hasn't even gone up from recent years. It's just the cause of deaths that are so suspicious. And for that reason alone, I mean, I'll be honest, I wouldn't visit the area anytime soon, but maybe I'm just buying into the hype. Now it is worth noting that there are multiple investigations going on into this from the FBI and other American agencies too, and I'm sure at some point we will get more answers as to what actually went down there. And hopefully all of this will blow over and things will go back to the way that they were before. Because honestly, the Dominican Republic is a beautiful place and I would love to go there again. But not if there's a serial killer on the loose. That is for damn certain. See that sign in the window? And that's why any boy and girl should be glad that somebody put it there. Because alcohol is dynamite.